get that done now that'll keep wood and stuff from being able to fall down through there and get out that just fine. <laughs> Alright. One more step completed. Fits in there really nice. Now my logs will lay on here and burn in here. It can get good airflow up through the bottom. Uh, through my, my little grate right there. It's looking really good. All right, well here is the plan for my blower. Okay, now this is my blower right here. And uh, let me see if I can. All right, it's two inches wide here. So the opening needs to be two inches wide that it goes into. And it's uh, seven and a half inches across. So what I've done here is I've just kind of laid out some marks. This is going to be the shape. This is going to be the shape of my back for this thing, of my air channel. So I'm going to have a two inch, two inch thick uh, or two inch wide strips that, that just kind of follow these lines all the way around and <clears throat> and then I'm going to take this piece here which is just an old piece of steel that I had it, it's a piece of sheet but it will work for this it's a uh, 16 gauge so well all right well got my metal marked out I can't see my screen so I, I hope I've got this in screen well I've got my metal marked out here for the back uh, for the back plate but over in this area over here I'm gonna go ahead and start cutting my two inch strips out of that area right there I'll be cutting two inch strips here uh, to start like going all the way around this thing uh, at the top and down here all except for the bottom my blower will be here get a little bit windy I'm just I'm just getting everything kind of ready to weld I'll be to this side. Okay. Now let's see what we got here. Yeah, that's gonna work. Back out. 
Okay, I'm just getting ready to start trying to tack this in place and get this channel built. So uh, I'm just going to try to tack it right now and I'll, I'll stitch weld it all together a little bit later. But let me make sure that I'm uh, waiting for this wind to stop. Of course, it, of course the wind's going to kick up soon as I try to get started. So I'm going to have to wait a minute. Okay, this, this is going to be the back for the blower, and it's going to mount just like this and be welded onto that. So, I've taken these two top holes here in the corner, and I've transferred those marks here. So, I'm going to try to drill these out and find some screws that may fit in those holes. <laughs> so. Alright, well... I found these uh, little sheet metal screws in the shop there, and with the proper persuasion, they fit in there perfectly now. So, all right, I'm I'm good to uh, go ahead and mount this plate. I'm just going to tack it up onto the uh, heater, and uh, and then we're going to attach attach the blower. Make sure it's going to fit good and yeah move on so here we go just line up there you go Take this thing, put it up here. Put it right there on top of the blower, right where it needs to be. And then on these center marks, which it is, I'm going to put a tack. Okay, that looks good. Kind of a nice heavy tack there. <clears throat> and over on this side, see nothing's moved. Another nice heavy tack. Okay. Now, okay, that's that's how it's gonna look. Uh, it's not actually the weight is not on the blower or anything like that, so I should be good corner. Well, all right. Well, I decided just to go ahead and weld it all the way. Uh, and you know I think it looks better it it really stitching it wouldn't hurt the stitching it probably wouldn't hurt the performance any but but as I got I had a few smaller gaps I guess where I had cut the steel and uh, you know when I was filling them in it, it made the stitches look really bad so uh, so I just went ahead and uh, did the whole thing and now I'll come back and I'll clean up all these welds and, you know, it'll look a little better. But we're almost done with this thing, all but paint. Um, what I've got to do now is uh, I'm going to try to build some kind of heat shield. And I'm going to use this thing here. Kind of a heat shield for the pipes. Uh, they are kind of thin wall pipes. And I had several suggestions that, uh, you know, I need to kind of protect them a little bit. Uh, because they may try to burn through so what I'm going to do is I'm going to add this this thin piece of metal here it's another piece of 16 gauge but uh, 
I'm just going to hang it up in up in the top, uh, and just to kind of let it, you know, sort of protect those tubes a little bit. But I'm fixing to get on on that right now. I think this was a very good suggestion by one of the viewers in my second video. Uh, but yeah, these will go just like this. And they'll wrap around the pot. Alright, so let me see if I can get that done. So, uh, I won't be able to get the camera in here, I'm pretty sure. But uh, I'll come back once I get that hung up. All right, well, I've got my heat shield installed. Uh, and basically all it does, it's going to help keep the flames, you know, from directly impinging on the on the tubes. So, uh, yeah, this should work. I mean, it is it's 16 gauge uh, steel, so it shouldn't it shouldn't be burning through. But uh, I've got it floating about a half inch below the pipe, so it's not actually touching the pipes either. All right, well, show you what I got here. I went ahead and mounted the blower temporarily once again, and I've got it temporarily wired, so it's running. Now, let's see here. <laughs> yes sir all the way down it's working good so well here comes the wind now but uh all right so that blower should blow all right well i'm gonna burn this thing i'm gonna burn it right here where it sits uh i'm, I'm about four feet from this wall right here so that should be plenty good I've added a short piece of stove pipe just to give me a little bit better draft. So uh, I'm gonna try to burn this thing off. I've done. I took the blower off, so uh, uh, I'm not gonna be using it right now. Once this thing's done burning, I'm gonna clean everything up and uh, and get it all uh, ready to paint. All right. Well, we're just gonna try to start this fire. We got a bunch of pine in the bottom so maybe it'll fire up pretty good. Gotta get this wood going. All right, well, let's, let's see what happens. I'm gonna leave the door open for a few minutes. Let, let this all get, uh, get going. And uh, in the meantime, I'm going to go get some more firewood. Maybe you can see up in there. Nice little flames starting up. This thing will be roaring here in a minute. Okay, we've been running now about five minutes. And uh, this thing's really starting to get, it's, it's really hot around through here, of course. But... I'm thinking most of my kindlings burned up, so we're just gonna start adding some more wood to it. I really want to get this thing burning really hot. There's oils and stuff on the on this thing that I just want to get burned out of there. And uh, plus any zinc or anything that may be up on the top. And the reason I made this burn chamber so big is that it'll hold my firewood. My firewood's anywhere from about 16 to 18 inches long, and it'll fit in here just perfect. So I don't have to worry too much about all of that. And it'll hold a good bit of it too. All right, let's let it get on up there. Start getting on up to the tent. All right, let's see here. Uh, it's been going a few minutes now. Uh, the door's getting tight. Let's see how she's doing. Oh, yeah. 
I like the way that's going across the, the top right there. Oh man. That was a very good idea. I can't remember who it was that uh, told me to uh, put that heat shield in there. So I'm I'm get I'm close to Okay, that one's at 500. It's 480 or 464. So these tubes are getting plenty hot to uh Where's my little laser? There it is. So there's over 400 degrees inside those tubes. Okay. One thing I want to show too in my shop I've got about this much distance behind the heater. So I wanted, I definitely wanted to find out how much heat is coming off the back. So we'll check that. Right now it's 82 degrees and it's about 50, 50 out here. So about 30 degrees difference uh, in the ambient temperature and, and what's uh, on this wall. That's nowhere near enough to start a fire. So, but the good thing is I do have fire extinguishers, so. And I never burn out here. This one's at 74. I'll never burn out here unless I'm with it. So, so all right. Yeah, never leave your wood stove unattended in a wood, in a wood shop. Well, here we are. Uh, I've done my initial burn. I've got the oils and all of that uh, galvanizing stuff and all that uh, should be all be burned off now. But I did run into a problem, uh, and I noticed it during the burn was my door, and my door warped a little bit when I opened it. Uh, when I opened it up, I guess it cooled down real fast. And uh, anyway, it got a, a little bow in it. And uh, so I clamped it back shut and uh, and latched it and all of that. And uh, when I came out here, here this morning, it was nice and flat again. So uh, I, added, I added this piece of angle in here to try to resist that. And I'm going to do another test burn also before... Uh, before I install this thing uh, in the shop just to make sure that because when that when that door warps like that you're not going to shut it back uh, you're not going to shut it back without clamps and things like that so anyway that's where I'm at now I added it's just a piece of angle it's a, a one inch one inch angle it's a eighth inch wall so it should add a lot of strength to that door and I just stitched it in so all right well I'm getting ready to clean it up now and get it painted oh yeah and just just uh just showing you that you know it does close and all just like it did before so uh everything's good to go down and everything and now what I'm gonna do is just I'm just gonna go over it with some Windex some glass cleaner and uh, just remove residues and dust and all that kind of stuff uh, I'm just gonna wipe over the whole thing I'm getting it ready to paint Mm 
remember that surface prep is everything. What I'm using is uh, the Rust-Oleum high temp. Uh, I really like that stuff. Uh, first of all, it's $15, $20 a can. And, uh, you know, so it makes it a lot cheaper to paint something like this. But when I used it on my smoker, that was, uh, that was about a year ago, it still looks fantastic. And I've had some, some pretty good burns in it. And, uh, and it, it's cooked a good bit of, of food. And this stuff has held up really well. So that's what I'm using. It doesn't have any of those uh, curing processes where you have to heat it to a certain amount and then back up and back up again. You just put it on just like paint. And when it dries, it's good to go. These cheap little two inch brushes here. I just got a cheap two inch brush and I'm just gonna start hitting a lot of these areas, mainly on the door and around up around the top and the feet and stuff, you know. And I'll do three coats all together. Get around all these wells. Around all them real good. All right, well that gets the first coat done. All the way around, even the bottom. So, uh, so yeah, we're good. We're looking pretty good. Uh, I've got two more coats to go. Uh, and they say to put, put each coat on within two hours of the last. So, so I'm just gonna go ahead and start all over again and do it all over. and. I'll be back once I'm done. Well, there it is, folks. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this project, because I sure did. Uh, now I've got me a good heater for my shop. Uh, I've already done a test burn, and I know the blower works. So all that's really left is installing this thing. But now that the paint is on here, I've got three coats. I use the Rust-Oleum high temp. It's, uh, I found it to be really good paint for, for doing this kind of stuff. Let the wind die down a little bit. But I want to thank everybody who's made suggestions on this build. Uh, this is the first time I built a heater or you know something like this, and there was really good ideas uh, on you know things to do with this thing, and I incorporated a lot of those. And uh, I really appreciate everybody who was helping me out with that. So if you're trying to build something and somebody makes suggestions, somebody who knows what they're doing, you'd probably be wise to maybe listen to them. And, uh, and I kind of try to follow that philosophy. But I really appreciate all the input that people have, have done with this build. But uh, with that said, I'm going to reburn this thing one more time. Uh, before I put it in, just in case anything wants to off gas or something like that, uh, I'm going to burn it one more time here. Then I'm going to install the blower back on it, and my son and I are going to put it in the shop <laughs> after I move everything else around. Uh, I know my table saw's got to move, and the the cookie monster's got to come out for this one to go in. So, uh, but anyway, I hadn't thought of a good name for this yet. So if anybody's got a good name, let me know. All right. Well, I hope y'all enjoyed the project, and I'll see y'all down the road.